So Bumble has IPO today and their ticker symbol is BMBL. And a quick summary of what Bumble is, is essentially it is a dating application. So I'll share you more details about what Bumble does different compared to the other hundreds of dating apps out there. But before we get into that, let's just look at some numbers. So the initial offering price was at $43. And then once they got listed, you can see here on the right side that it was hovering around the $76 mark. And it's currently, it's volatile right now because obviously it just oh, IPO'd, but it was hovering anywhere from between the 70s to basically right now this current price right here. And obviously you can see these other articles opens at $76 per share. And then it's after pricing IPOs at $43. And then also you can see that it raised 2.2 bill, which is pretty crazy here. But um, and the market cap is hovering around $8 billion. And before we get into the details, I wanted to show you guys how you can get two free stocks valued up to $1,850. All you need to do is go in the description below and click on that first link. And that will be sent you over to Webull. And if you decide to deposit hundred bucks, you will get two free stocks. And then if you do that, I'll also receive two free stocks as well. And it benefits both of us. So if you haven't already signed up for Webull, you can go ahead and check out that link in the description below. Now let's go back and check out Bumble. So here is the CEO. Whitney Wolf Hurd, and she's actually 31 years old. And the crazy thing is going to be the youngest CEO or female CEO to take a company public, which you can see here, that sentence right there even states it too. And the fun fact about this is that one, obviously she's going to be the youngest female CEO to go um, IPO, but two, she actually used to be with Tinder and then she ended up leaving and starting Bumble. So that's actually kind of crazy that uh, she was originally with Tinder and I can send you here right here. I'm on Wikipedia page, by the way, for the Bumble uh, company. And basically, co-founder of Tinder founded Bumble shortly, founded Bumble shortly after leaving Tinder. And then obviously there's some, you know, some sort of like lawsuits and stuff regarding why she left and everything, which you can check out more details on it. But I want to focus more on the business aspects of this video. And the thing is with Bumble, is it currently the parent company of both Bumble and Badu. So I'm not too familiar with Badu, but I believe I've read it was a more based in Europe and like other countries outside of the US. And it seems like Bumble, at least from my experience, is more of a US based um, application. But again, let me comment below if you um, are outside the US and you're messing around with Bumble, definitely let me know. But I believe it's mainly the US right now. Now, uh, interesting is the revenue sources. So like how does a dating app generate money? So in case you're not familiar, basically dating apps, at least on your phone, is you just upload, make a profile, and then you just swipe left on right on people that you like or don't like. And then you end up matching, chatting, and then either you meet up, network, etc. right? So the main way that these apps make money is through premium subscription. So right now, basically, if it's a free it's free to use these apps and they have you some sort of like limitations. Now I've only used like the main ones like Tinder and like those, that's basically like it or Bumble. I've, I've been on Bumble, but I, I don't really know too much about like the premium stuff. So I can't really comment on it, but based on like the way they market and promotion it, I'm sure people who have used it can definitely leave more details below. But in the most simple terms, you basically on the free plan, you're limited with the amount of people that you can like swipe on and meet. And then the premium you have like basically it's either unlimited or some sort of like bonus um, features that make it easier for you to find matches apparently, right? So in short, they make money from premium monthly subscriptions. Now that is the main source, at least for Bumble right now. They do stand in this article that they also have revenue from advertising and partnerships, which I believe through these apps that they showcase some sort of ads every now and then, now, I don't know how much money that generates them, but I would assume, and again, this is just my own opinion, that the monthly subscriptions generate them the most revenue because obviously if they have millions of users and a fraction of them are paying you, you know, whatever the cost is per month, then obviously you're going to make the majority of your money through that. And it even states here that company had 2.4 million paying users at the end of the third quarter, up from 2.1 million a year ago. So that's a massive, literally what, 2 million almost gain in terms of um, paid subscriptions. Now, my thoughts are how well is Bumble going to do against Match Group? So let me show you again what Match Group is. So Match Group, think of this as like the original, the beast out there in the dating app space, right? So this Match Group, they've already IPO'd years back and they own the majority of the biggest dating applications websites out there. So if you've heard of Tinder, they got Tinder. You heard of Match.com, 
they got Match.com. They got Medic. I'm not sure what that is. I've, I've seen commercials like OkCupid. Okay there's Hinge, Plenty of Fish, and there's like Ship. I don't, some other ones obviously I haven't heard of, but I'm sure other people have. So they have a massive portfolio of dating applications and websites out there. And they essentially are taking over the space right now. And in terms of comparing it to just Bumble and Badu, I definitely say that Bumble needs to definitely expand their current uh, portfolio because right now it seems like Match Group could just you know create another application. And next thing you know it, it's like, what's the point of sticking with just one app, right? Because at the end of the day, and this again, this is my own opinion is they're all basically apps designed to meet people, right? So if your app doesn't make it easier for people to do it, then they're just going to go to the app that makes it easier for them. So again, there's different, I'd say, reasons that people download specific applications. And obviously, like age definitely plays a big role in it. So if you're younger, maybe, you know, college age and below, you're just using it mainly because like your social groups are using it. But then once you start to get older, obviously, there's more different uh, purposes for that. Again, I can't really comment on each use case and why people download it. But at the end of the day, it's designed for you basically to meet people, right? Unless you're just there for bond or boredom, but those people don't really pay you. They don't end up paying the application monthly subscription, right? So uh, the thing is with Match Group, right? And let me just bring over the... Uh, the stock price here so you can get some sort of like example so here is match group and it's hovering right now at 171 dollars usd and its current market cap is basically almost 46 billion dollars so it's massive compared to bumble right now and it's been out for years and that funny thing is actually they're both headquartered back in texas so this one's in dallas and i believe bumble is in austin and the uh match group i mean they've been out for years in terms of um their stocks you can check it out so technically, I mean, if you got in early, like you're doing pretty well. So, I mean, the beginning prices were, you know, literally almost $10 basically going up. So even just like in the last year, let's see, 2019, hovering around 50-ish or so, and even 2020, around basically, you know, below 100. So closer to some almost like a 3 Three maybe less than 4x if you were just getting last two years and before that's like a 17x if you got in like a 10 bucks so so i mean that's not that's a pretty good return i mean just for a few years but uh that's definitely something that people need to consider when they're just comparing it with bumble because right now bumble obviously the ipo'd and the main i'd say the main differentiating factor that um bumble states is that for bumble when you match with somebody for instance if it's a guy matching with a girl you would have to wait for the girl to message you first. So that's apparently the main business uh, factor why Bumble is different from like a Tinder or these other dating apps. Now, I haven't used all those apps before, so I can't really comment on them. But based off like Tinder, for example, and this was like the first, I believe, the one at least that most people knew about before these um, competitors came out. And Tinder, basically the guy messages first. Normally, Bumble is main for girl messaging first. So in terms of UK's, case, I mean... It has its place, but at the end of the day is can they compete with Match Group, right? Can they generate the numbers of revenue that the Match Group company with all their apps that they have did? Then Bumble could definitely be bullish long term. But if they were just to stick with just one application, which I hopefully I'm assuming they have more business ideas and plans in the future. Obviously, since they IPO and raise a lot of money. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens with Bumble. I'm definitely interested in following along with and seeing what it is. But again, none of this is financial advice, guys. Make sure you do your own research before making any investments. But uh, so far, let me know your thoughts on Bumble. Do you think it is a good investment long term? Or do you think that the price right now is overvalued and it's going to correct for the next few weeks? Definitely let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you want to follow for more updates, news going around with the market and the world, hit that subscribe button, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.